Today, I will be demonstrating Raw Power 1.1, which has a number of new features and improvements. If you aren't familiar with Raw Power, I recommend watching the Raw Power 1.0 video, which is also on this YouTube channel. Let's start at the top. In the toolbar is a new File Info button, which shows metadata about the image. As you can see, it shows the camera model, lens, pixel size, and megapixels, shooting info, capture date and time, and flash status. The shooting info includes the ISO, focal length, exposure compensation, aperture, and shutter speed. Next is the new preset feature. Raw Power ships with a small set of built-in presets, and you can create your own. To apply a preset, just select it from the menu. In the standalone app, a preview of the effect appears immediately as you roll over the preset. Presets add their settings to the image, but if you hold the Option key down, presets replace all adjustments on the image. As you can see here, the image already has boost applied to it. As I pick the Hold Highlights and Brighten Shadows, boost is left unchanged. Or if I hold the Option key down, boost disappears. If you have an image that is a negative, you can quickly switch it to a positive, or vice versa, with the Invert Image command. If you want to make your own presets, simply adjust an image the way you like and select Save as Preset. What I'm going to do here is create a small preset which is the way I like to start a lot of my adjustments. What I'm going to do is turn Boost down a little bit, boost the shadows a little bit, add a little vibrancy, and maybe some sharpening. I pick Save as Preset and give it the name of my choosing, My Start Point. In addition, you'll see a checkbox called Automatically Apply to Images from this camera. Raw Power 1.1 has a feature called Camera Presets, which allow a preset to automatically be applied to images for a specific camera model or models. If I check this box and click Save, any image that I open in Raw Power from this point on that has never been adjusted by Raw Power will automatically have that preset applied. It's a great way to set up a starting point or, for example, specific values inside raw processing. A given camera model can only have one preset assigned to it, but a preset can be applied to any number of cameras. This automatic camera preset behavior applies when adjusting an image for the first time in raw power. It does not apply if you press revert to original, or if you adjust an image that was previously adjusted in raw power. You can also edit presets. You can change their names, including the built-in ones, rearrange them, or delete them. For example, if I don't ever plan to invert images, I can simply delete that preset. I might want to rename my starting point Maybe mention it has sharpening in it, although it lists it here as well, but that's just so I can see it in the menu and know which one it is. Maybe I want to have more than one starting point. And then maybe I'll put that at the top. So now I have removed a, a built-in preset, renamed one, and changed the order. As you can see, the camera presets are also here as well. If I want to change that, I simply pick a different preset and click this button here. And now a fix overexposure for RAW has been applied for this camera model. Finally, you can import and export presets in this interface. To export, just select a preset, click the export button. You can give it a name of your choosing or just stick with the default. That is a standalone file that you can send to a friend or put on another machine by email or whatever way you want. Import works similarly 
though you can import more than one preset at a time. Changes to this edit preset only apply once you press the Save button. As you can see, my rename preset is at the top of the list. Related to the preset feature is copy and paste of adjustments. You can copy the current set of adjustments, close the image, and then paste those adjustments onto another image. Here's an image taken in the snow during a snowball fight. It's very blue. We can correct it easily with white balance. In 1.1, white balance and other samplers work continuously so you can drag around to get the results you want. I'm also going to boost the shadows some. Again, maybe add a little bit sharper. Now I'm going to copy the adjustments and open an image taken slightly later when the girl has been hit by a snowball. I can paste the adjustments and you can see I can either add or replace just like with presets. In this case it doesn't matter because the image has not been adjusted. You can see now that the shadows have been applied, the white balance has been set, and the sharpening. Only the applied adjustments, that is those with the check box checked, will be pasted. Now let's look at Crop and Straighten, another new feature of Raw Power 1.1. You can specify the aspect ratio from a list here, specify your own custom aspect ratio, or have an unconstrained crop. Click the Crop tool and drag out the box. As you can see at the top in the Crop HUD, the megapixel rating appears to give you a sense for how big the image will be after cropping. You can show and hide rule third guides. And when you're done, click the Apply button or press Return. I'm going to center this roughly. You can straighten the image one of two different ways. The first way is with a straighten slider. So I can just maybe just tilt this just to make the image a little bit more interesting. The second way to straighten an image is with the straighten tool. With the straighten tool you drag out a line on the image and raw power calculates the angle for you. In this case we're going to draw a line across this building. You see we get an angle of about 3 degrees. And we're done. If what you have are vertical lines rather than horizontal lines, you can draw, drag the line out that way as well. So we can use, for example, this line. You get the same result. Now I'm going to show you gamut mapping. The Apple RAW engine in its final step ensures that colors are within the gamut of its color space, which is either Adobe RGB or P3. This generally provides good results, but sometimes it's preferable to disable gamut mapping. In some cases you might prefer the unmapped appearance. If you look closely at the sun, you can see the difference between gamut mapping on and off. It's more obvious if I saturate this image further. If you turn off gamut mapping, colors that are out of range will be clipped. You may prefer that appearance or may want to use some of Raw Power's other controls to adjust how those out of range colors move back into gamut. Another new feature of Raw Power 1.1 is the ability to export images as 16-bit TIFFs in the ProPhoto RGB color profile. If you're going to do that, you definitely want to turn off gamut mapping because ProPhoto is a larger space than Adobe RGB or P3, and you want to get as many colors as possible into your ProPhoto RGB output file. 
I hope this tour of 1.1 was helpful for you. If you have any questions, please feel free to email using the feedback link in the About box. In both the standalone app and in the photo extension, you can access the About box by clicking on the raw power icon in the bottom right corner of the window. Thank you.